prayer in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, woman, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. St. Augustine, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, I know what most of you are thinking right now. Joseph Gedney, the director of Darwin's Documentaries, is giving a presentation on St. Augustine. This is going to be interesting. <laughs> Anyways, moving forward. Um, I mean, um, proceeding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to give a talk on St. Augustine, and, okay, thank you very much. And the defense of his literal writings on the historical truth of Genesis. The picture depicted here is entitled, St. Augustine Disputing with the Heretics. And if I believe that if St. Augustine was alive today, the, the painter would probably paint it in this way. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right, so over the course of the years in the origin debate, this actually dates all the way back to the early 19th centuries, uh, not 19th, sorry, 20th century. There have been claims that St. Augustine was a patristic support of evolution. Um, in some ways that evolution could somehow be f um, could fit into his interpretation of Genesis, or that he's actually had a rudimentary form of evolution in, in his interpretation of itself. Daniel L. Markham says, what we should conclude is that St. Augustine was quite ahead of his time and made steps forward, to sorry, towards the ideas that evolutionary biologists are discovering today. Joseph Bullen, in his book, Darwin in Evolution states, St. Augustine seems to have affirmed a kind of evolution, though he does not go into detail. I say that St. Augustine did indeed go into detail, very much so, just Joseph Bullen did not bother to read it. <laughs> but before we go into the claims of whether St. Augustine was an evolutionist, we have to first go into an area of St. Augustine's interpretation that is vitally important to understanding um, his work. In the first book of the Bible, first chapter, Genesis states, and God said, be light made, and light was made, and God saw that light, that it was good, and he divided the light from the darkness, and he called the light day, and the darkness night, and there was evening and morning one day. St. Augustine commenting on this states, it is hard to work out and explain on what kind of circuit before this happened they could follow each other those three days and nights of the light which was first made while it retained its nature. Um, if it is a bodily light, then we must understand as being made then. So, if you notice here, St. Augustine is not saying that it's impossible or is this impossible, it's just hard or difficult to understand, and this is indeed very true. We can't go back and see the three days of creation. We, we only know what, gen, what Genesis tells us. Um, St. Augustine took up this question again in his book, The City of God. He states, of course, what we mean by the days we know and experience are those that have a morning because the sun rises and an evening because the sun sets but the first three days of creation pass without the benefit of sun, since according to scripture, the sun was made on the fourth day. Of course, there is mention in the beginning that light was made by the word of God and that God separated it from the darkness, calling the light day and the darkness night. But no experience of our senses can tell us just what kind of light it was and by what alternating movement it caused morning and evening. Not even our intellects can comprehend, comprehend what is meant, yet we can have no hesitation in believing the fact. St. Augustine never ruled out the literal interpretation of the days as 24-hour periods, as many would have you believe. In fact, this is the last thing that he would do. If one knows the history of St. Augustine, how, he's, how he was a pagan um, in, his, in the early part of his life, then he 
um, bought into the errors of Manichaeanism. And then through St. Uh, St. Ambrose's talks on the six days of creation, or his hexymoron, St. Augustine was brought to the truth. And in St. Ambrose's hexymoron, St. Ambrose specifically states that the day should be taken as 24 hours. So do you really think that the talks that would have convinced you into, um, converted you to the Catholic faith, he would have just blown off later in his life? No, I do not think so. But St. Augustine was seemingly dissatisfied with the answer that the day should just be taken as 24-hour periods. Because as we will see that it's actually contradictory to St. Augustine's translation of Genesis, um, the tra uh, his scripture translation. So he took a different line of approach. He states, is it that on the first day on which light was made, the setting up of the spiritual and intelligent creation is being announced under the name of light? The nature of this creation being understood to include all the angels and powers. So in other words, maybe on the first day, God didn't necessarily create bodily light, but he created the angels. St. Augustine again in his book, The City of God, states, So I think they, that is angels, are spoken of in this book of Genesis under the names of light and darkness. And even if the author perhaps had a different meaning, meaning yet our discussion of the obscure language, language has not been wasted time. For though we have been unable to discover his meaning, yet we have adhered to the rule of faith, which is sufficiently ascertained by the faith by the faithful from other passages of equal authority. For though it is the material works of God, that is bodily light, which are spoken of here, they certainly have re a resemblance to the spiritual. So what he's saying here is um, perhaps Moses was actually trying to convey that, um, that light, bodily light was made in the first day and God separated light and darkness. But it also has a very close resemblance to the creation and fall of the angels, which you read of in Apocalypse, how God created all the angels, he created light, and then he separated the light from darkness, that is the good angels from the bad angels. And in fact, um, this is actually a common position in the Fathers, from the, uh, and, if, and if you look at this icon here, you can see that it's, it depicts clearly that Christ creating the angels on the first day, but also in the background, you see that golden splendor, and that represents God creating light as well. So what the position is, is that God created, when he said light, he's talking kind of in different levels. He's saying bodily light, but he's also implying angels. It's kind of what, what Father Sean was talking about in the beginning. He says, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. In the beginning means that God created time, but also in a higher level, it means Christ. But some Catholics might say, isn't this an allegorical interpretation of a certain part of scripture, and therefore don't we have patristic support of taking Genesis allegorically? St. Augustine, um, I think I skipped a slide here. Anyways. He states, yes, there's some slides missing, I'm sorry. But anyways, um, St. Augustine stated, instead that day which God made is itself repeated through his works, not in a circular bodily motion, but in spiritual knowledge when that blessed company of angels before anything else contemplates in the word of God that about which God says, let it be made. And in consequence of this, is first made in their angelic knowledge. When the text says, and thus it was made, and only after that do they know the actual thing made in itself, which signifies by the making of evening, they then refer this knowledge of the thing made by the praise of truth, where they have seen the idea of making it. And this signifies, and this is signified by the making of morning. I apologize, this is a, I, I got mixed up here. Actually, my, my notes are mixed up. Um, so what St. Augustine saw was that actually um, he saw the solution in taking angels, uh, mean, um, taking light to mean angels in Genesis. He saw a solution to his problem of how do we interpret the days of Genesis. He's saying that perhaps when um, the angels are in fact as what caused 
the evening and morning. See, when before God creates something, he always has it in his, he has to have it in his mind one, um, beforehand. So the angels see the, uh, the, the being or the thing about to be created in the mind of God. And so this is a more perfect knowledge. And so this is what St. Augustine refers to as their morning knowledge. And so when God creates the being or the creature, the angels see the thing in, in actual existence, and which is less perfect than it was in the mind of God. So this is what St. Augustine refers to as the angel's evening knowledge. And so now St. Augustine has this cycle going um, where he can explain the days of Genesis using the angels. Okay, going back to the allegorical interpretation. So isn't this an allegorical interpretation of the days in Genesis? St. Augustine states, and please let nobody assume that what I have said about the spiritual light, that is his interpretation of the days, that none of this can be said strictly and properly, but that it all belongs to a kind of figurative and allegorical understanding of the day and evening and morning. Certainly, it is different from our usual way of talking about this bodily light of every day, but that does not mean that here we have the strict and proper, they're just a metaphorical use of these terms. So if someone told St. Augustine that your, in, your position is allegorical, he would, he would deny it himself. And this is, in fact, um, seen in the position of Cornelius Alapide. When he speaks about St. Augustine's interpretation of the days, he does not use the word allegorical. He uses the word St. Augustine has a mystical interpretation of the days. And this is, in fact, very accurate, because all St. Augustine did is he applied Genesis and just took it to the next level, and it's to a spiritual level, to the position of the angels. And also, before we go on, we have to talk about St. Augustine's rule for interpreting scripture. So in essence, St. Augustine's rule for interpreting scripture is that you must um, take the literal interpretation and believe it unless reason or necessity requires you not to, not to. So one must go into reading scripture as a believer. The literal interpretation must be your default position. St. Alphonsus Liguori has a very interesting quote on this. In his book, The History of Heresies and Their Refutation, he states, it is a certain rule, says St. Augustine, and is commonly followed by the Holy Fathers to take the words of Scripture in their proper sense, unless some absurdity would result from doing so. For if it, for if it were allowed to explain everything in a mystic sense, it would be impossible to prove any article of faith from Scripture and it would become the source of a thousand errors, as everyone would give it whatever sense he pleased. So, we, so, Saint Iga, so Saint Alphonse de Liguori says we must stick to the rule of St. Augustine for interpreting scripture. We must take the literal interpretation unless it is against reason. It's that, that's, it's that strong of a wording. Remember, reason is not, does not mean unscientific. Um, the literal interpretation might be unscientific, but as long as it's against the reason, according to St. Augustine's rule, we should be required to take it as such. So the next question is, however, is if this was St. Augustine's rule, why did, he, why did he not take the days of Genesis as a, a literal reading? But first, let us talk about something a little different, because the next question, however, comes up. If the days were based off of the um, angelic knowledge, as St. Augustine would pose, the next question is, however, what was the length of these days? St. Augustine states, but if the angelic mind is able to grasp all things simultaneously, because I guess the, the angels can grasp all things simultaneously, well, we would have to put everything else one after the other which a text puts one after the other in an ordered chain of causes, does this mean that the things which were being made were all made simultaneously? So what St. Augustine is saying here is because the days are based off of angelic knowledge and angels can, can grasp all things at once, perhaps there was no time in creation and God just created everything in, in an instant. St. Augustine, but 
according to St. Augustine's rule for interpreting scripture, and must be supported in scripture itself. St. Augustine continues, the creator, of, after all, about whom the scripture told the story of how he completed and finished his works in six days, is the same as the one about whom it is written elsewhere, and assuredly without there being any contradiction that he created all things simultaneously. And the Latin word they use there is simul. Sirach 18, verse 1. And St. Augustine realizes this, that if, if you take this text, this verse in Sirach, literally, it completely contradicts the Genesis account. He states, you must remember that it, it is written, the one who lives forever created all things simultaneously, Sirach 18, verse 1. And then ask yourself how things can be said to have been created simultaneously when their creation was spread over intervals of time, not just of hours, but of days. So now St. Augustine is starting to build up his argument a little bit here. He's, he's, he's shown how you can fit the angels into um, interpreting the days. And now he has a proof text in scripture showing that God didn't create over intervals of time. He created all things, all the six days were in a, in a point of, um, si everything was simultaneous. There was no time in the six days of creation. So now following his own rule, St. Augustine deems that it is unreasonable to state that God created all things over six days if elsewhere in the same book it says that God created all things simultaneously. Cornelius Alapide took up this question in his commentary of Genesis. He states, you will say that an Ecclesiasticus, that is Sirach, 18 verse 1, it says, He that liveth forever created all things together. And not to confuse everyone, it's the same Latin word, it is simul. Uh, simul is, has, a, has a broader sense um, based on context in Latin. It could mean at once, simultaneously, or it could mean together, based on context. Therefore, creation did not occur, sorry, Cornelius Alapide continues, Therefore, creation did not occur serially over six days. I answer as follows. The word together, that is simul, must not modify he created, but all things. That is to say that God created all things in their entirety. That is all things categorically, with no exception. There is nothing and nothing exists that God did not create. Whence in the place of together in the Greek text of Ecclesiasticus, we read koine, or which um, translates to in general. So in the Greek text of Sirach, we read, he that liveth forever created all things in general, without exception. So we see that St. Augustine, owing to that he did not have a very good command of Greek, um, had a wrong interpretation for this verse. St. Augustine's second proof text for a simultaneous creation comes from Genesis 2, verse 4, which states in the Vetus Latina Biblia, St. Augustine's translation of Scripture, when the day was made, God made heaven and earth. And let me break this up a little bit here so we realize the, um, the meaning of this. You see the phrase, when the day was made, God made heaven and earth, but in gen and it continues, and all the greenery of, greener of the field. But in Genesis 1, when the day was made and one met, when God made heaven and earth were two separate events. So St. Augustine sees that this, that this verse clump, almost clumps these two events together as uh, simultaneously. St. Augustine, commenting on this passage, says, So now we get evidence and support not from another book of Holy Scripture, that is Sirach, that God created all things simultaneously, but from the next door neighbor's testimony on the page following the whole matter, that is Genesis 1, which gives us a hint with the words, when the day was made, God made heaven and earth. So St. Augustine saw that this um, verse in scripture, which because it was actually in the book of Genesis itself, he saw that it was a better proof text for his position than Sirach 18 verse 1. But first, let us take a few historical facts into account. First of all, 
St. Augustine did not have, for most of his life at least, did not have a very good command of Greek. He says in his confessions, I considered no less a burden and a punishment than Greek. Secondly, St. Augustine, being a contemporary of St. Jerome, could only use the, the Latin text of his time, the Vetus Latina Biblia, which was not necessarily accurate in all, its, in, all, in all of its aspects. To make the problem worse, there was actually more than one, we, we say Vetus Latina Biblia, but there was many Vetus Latina Biblia spread throughout the empire. St. Augustine actually complains of this in his De Doctrina, Doctrina Christiana. Saint, um, for the translations of the scriptures from Hebrew into Greek can be counted, but the Latin translators are all out of number. So these facts obviously would have a large impact on St. Augustine's interpretation of scripture because he did not have um, the Vulgate, so he did not necessarily have an accurate text in the Latin. And secondly, he did not know Greek, so he could not use the Septuagint Bible, which, um, um, which was the standard Greek Bible of the time. So, let's go back to Genesis 2 verse 4 and compare the translations. This is the Vetus in Latin, and this translates into English. This is the book of the creation of heaven and earth. When the day was made, God made heaven and earth and every green thing of the field. In the Vulgate, this is his Latin, and translated from the Douay Rheims to be, these are the generations of heaven and earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the heaven and earth and every plant of the field. Very different. And the, and the phrase to look at here um, is in the day. And the Hebrew word used here is bayam. And the other time that bayam is used in Genesis is God's command to Adam, in the day that you shall eat, the fruit, eat that tree, you shall die to death. Um, so this should really be taken as a Hebrew idiom, meaning when, when the Lord God made when the Lord God made heaven and earth. And actually in the Greek, it is translated to when. They don't have in the day, it's just when in the Septuagint. So as you can see, in the correct translation of Genesis 2 verse 4, you have to admit that St. Augustine's translation was just bad. The Vetus Latina Biblia was supposed to be translated from the Septuagint, and it has Absolutely, at least in this verse, no support from the Hebrew or the Greek. It was just plainly a bad translation. So, in conclusion, St. Augustine seemed to have um, hinted in this, at this in his very book. He seemed a little bit uncertain, a little weary about, about going off the road of a literal interpretation. He states, so then, if anybody is not satisfied with the lines which I have been able in my small measure to explore and trace, but requires another theory about the numbering of those days, by which they may be better understood, not as prophetic types and figures, but as a strict and proper account of the way the foundations of this creation were laid, then by all means let him look for one, and with God's help find one. I am certainly not insisting on this one, in such a way as to contend that nothing else preferable can be found. So we actually see St. Augustine's rule of interpreting scripture showing forth in his work here. He's saying that the literal interpretation is always going to be better. And he's saying if anyone, I've tried, but I obviously could not find, um, based on these two proof texts, Sirach 18 verse 1 and Genesis 2 verse 4, I tried, but I could not find the answer of, of how to take this the days of Genesis literally, but if anyone else can find one, please, with God's help, do it. Before we continue, a very fundamental principle in St. Augustine's um, um, interpretation of creation must be taken into account first. And this is in unison with all the other fathers, of course. On the seventh day rested from the God, that is, rested from the establishing of different kinds of create creatures because he did not now establish any new kinds anymore. Later in his work, he states, 
But to say anything is still being made from nothing is to wish to do violence to the finished works in which he created all things simultaneously. So put simply, after the seventh day, God uh, will never create another new entity. All right, so now we finally arrive at St. Augustine's Seminale Rationes, or uh, we don't really have a English translation of the word rationes. Um, it would take about a sentence to describe it, what it actually means in the Latin, but I'm just going to use the translation of seminal reasons. So first, let's get what a basic idea of what the seminal reasons are. I, won't go, I will not go into detail, but um, just, just to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here. So the earth is said to have produced grass and trees then in their causes. That is to have received the power to produce them. It was in the earth, that is to say, that things which are, were, were going to be realized in the course of time had already been made, if I, if I may so put it, in the roots of time. St. Augustine states in a, another part of his work, they will ask me in what way later on, that is, um, the creation of Adam from the slime of the earth. I will answer visibly with the appearance of the human constitution that we know it, not however born of parents, but he from the mud and she from his rib. They will ask in what way then the first time, that is in their seminal reasons. I will answer invisibly, poten potentially, in their causes, in the way things to come are made when they have not been made in actual fact. Now, now um, some theistic evolutionists might jump up and cheer at this point because it seems that St. Augustine is describing his seminal reasons here as a mere pure potentiality, but this is indeed not the case. It is much more complicated than this. <coughs> but first, before we, before we know what St. Augustine believes, we have, to, we have to realize why he believed it in the first place. It, it's a slightly strange position, and it's very, it's very different from the other father's um, interpretation of Genesis. St. Augustine's three reasons for the seminal reasons. Number one, so Genesis 2, verse 5. And every green plant of the field before it sprung up on the earth, and every herb of the ground before it grew. So it seems that Genesis 2, verse 5 is describing here that God created everything in potentiality, and then he brought things into actuality. St. August St. Thomas Aquinas, um, commenting on St. Augustine's interpretation of this verse states, on the day on which God created the heavens on, and the earth, he created also every plant of the field, not indeed actually, but before it sprung up on the earth, that is potentially. Excuse me. In this work, Augustine describes the third day, but other writers to the first instituting of the world. This actually might not be such a um, controversial position, it's just another father just differing slightly from the others. But when one realizes, so after St. Augustine, he laid his foundation of creation on the six days being a simultaneous event. But one has to realize that in a simultaneous event, there's no time, which means that there can be no movement. So. <coughs> The plants of the field could not have sprung up in the six days of creation because that would have required movement, which would require time. So St. Augustine has a quandary here because we have to remember that St. Augustine, as I pointed out earlier, and this is where it comes, it's very fundamental understanding why he held to seminal reasons, how St. Augustine held that God will never create anything after the six days. But the plants of the field have to be coming into being after the six days. So St. Augustine's kind of, personally, once St. Augustine realized that he, he, he had to explain this passage, I think he should have realized that he, had a wrong, he turned a wrong corner somewhere. Because obviously it's very easy to explain if there's time and simultaneous creation, because then God can just bring things, can just create the plant. But St. Augustine, um, because of his great belief that scripture should be taken literally and his great love for them, and 
how he read Sirach 18, ver 18 verse 1 in Genesis 2 verse 4 and took them literally. He saw he had to solve this problem. And, and so he called in seminal reasons to explain this. So God created everything in potentiality. That is, he created a seminal reason. But then after the six days of creation were over, the creature has to come into actuality. All right, reason number two. St. Augustine states in his literal meaning of Genesis, however easy it is, sorry, however easy it, after all, a human being may think it is for God to have done all this simultaneously with the rest. We know with absolute certainty that when we hear the man's words, therefore, when he is giving names, whether to the animals or to the woman, whatever the syllables that is uttered with, not even two of them could have been spoken simultaneously. How much less then could all of this have happened altogether with the things that were created simultaneously? So what St. Augustine is saying here is that you have Genesis 1, God creating the sun, the moon, the stars, the animals, and the plants, and man. And St. Augustine has laid his foundation that these things all happen simultaneously. But now you turn the page and now you're in Genesis 2, where springs are bubbling forth from the earth, where Adam is being taken from the last time of the earth and formed by God, where God is bringing the animals to Adam and Adam is naming them, and then Eve being brought forth from Adam's side. So obviously this is taking place in time, Genesis 2. But you also have God creating things in Genesis 2. So how is this possible? Because obviously if it was in time, it has to be outside the six days of creation. So therefore, God cannot be creating things in Genesis 2. To solve this, St. Augustine once again calls upon seminal reasons. God created everything that is living things in potentiality in the six days. And then in Genesis 2, it's just these things coming into actuality using the seminal reasons. All right, so third reason. Genesis 2, 19. So this is St. Augustine's Vetus translation in Latin. This trans and the important word to, to see here is ad hoc, which means, which translates to still, further, or up to this point. The Vetus translates into English in Genesis 2, verse 19. God still fashioned from the earth all the beasts of the field and all the flying things of heaven, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. So one has to notice here that this is in Genesis 2, um, and this is after God created Adam. And God still fashioned the earth, fashioned from the earth, earth all the beasts of the field and all the flying things of heaven. And even if one is to understand that this is in Genesis that this is a, um, that he's talking about the same event on the sixth day. Why is God still making the flyings of the things of heaven when they were specifically made on the fifth day? And obviously, if God is bringing these things to Adam for them to be named, this is obviously taking place in time, and God is still fashioning creatures from the earth. And in St. Augustine's interpretation, this could not be in the six days of creation, and God cannot be creating these things outside of them. So to solve this quantity, once again, St. Augustine calls upon some other reasons to say that God created the animals and the birds and man in potentiality, that is in their seminal reasons in the beginning, in the six days, in the simultaneous event. And then once, once time started, only then did these beings come into actuality. And so those are the three reasons for St. Augustine's seminal reasons. So we have to make a point here. I would admit, I would, have, I, I would say that St. Augustine is actually a literalist when it comes to, here's the important point, his translation. The reason why St. Augustine is singled out from the other fathers by theistic evolutionists is that his interpretation of Genesis is different than the other fathers. But why should we expect him to have the same interpretation if he has a different translation? And this is really the key to understanding St. Augustine's interpretation of Genesis. All right, so now putting all translations aside, good and bad, 
let us see what St. Augustine meant by these seminal reasons and to see if they have any, if in any way they support theistic evolution. Oh, sorry, I forgot to finish this slide. <laughs> so St. Augustine states, based on Genesis 2, verse 19, so then it would, it would not stay here that God still molded from the earth all the beasts of the field and all the flying things of heaven unless it had been done in another way that then, that is potentially and causally, as befitted the work by which all things were created together simultaneously. But let's go a little bit deeper into the Latin of Genesis 2, verse 19. Here's the Latin, um, and there's the Vulgate Latin, and this is translated into the Douay Rheims. And the Lord God having formed out of the ground all the beasts of the earth and all the fowl of the air. So all of a sudden, um, St. Jerome in his Latin used the pluperfect tense when describing the action of God of forming the beasts and the birds. And, and so this translates into English, and God having formed. So God was still not, was not still forming animals and birds after he created Adam, but having formed out of the ground all the beasts of the earth, he brought them to Adam to name them. And so we see once again that St. Augustine's um, translation falls short of perfect. Skip this. All right, so now let us see what St. Augustine meant by the seminal reasons and what they actually are. St. Augustine states, so first off, a good image to have of the seminal reasons is to is God planting seeds in a sense of future realities and then these realities in time um, become actuality. Like you plant an acorn and it will become um, it, the tree actually isn't there yet but has, the acorn has a potential to make this tree. But St. Augustine specifically denies that this is what he meant by the seminal reasons. He states, seeds do indeed provide some sort of comparison to this on account of the growths to come that are bound with them. Before all seeds, nonetheless, are those causes. In another place, St. Augustine describing a similar reason states, this you see is how the earth produced them at the word of God before they had sprung up by receiving all their numbers, which it would extrude through the periods of time proper to each kind of plant. To understand this a little bit, Saint, when St. Augustine uses the word numbers, um, he means um, what we would call, um, he probably wouldn't like it being called this since it's kind of Aristotelian. Uh, it's specific form. So by receiving all their specific form, which it would extrude through the periods of time proper to each kind of plant. In another place, St. Augustine states, when the day was made, the whole universe was established, and that simultaneously among its component, uh, component elements were established those things that would start burgeoning with the onset of time, whether vegetation or animal, all of them according to their kind. So now we see kind of a pattern being set up here in St. Augustine's quotes. We see that St. Augustine, when he says the seminal reasons, um, when he's talking about the seminal reasons, he's not talking about appear mere potentiality where God just kind of put some chemicals and the chemicals just kind of combined and made something. No, the, going back to the seed analogy, if you plant an acorn, you're going to get an oak tree. It's what you would might call a determined specific potentiality. Yes, the tree isn't there, it's in potential, but that acorn can only produce an oak tree. It cannot produce an ash tree. St. Augustine affirms this one more time, and more specifically when he states, derived from those primordial causes of theirs in which they were inserted into the world, that is the seminal reasons, and that was created when the day was made before they ever burgeoned into the visible manifestations of their specific natures, which God had already created in the six days. So God created the natures in the six days and he created the seminal reasons to only produce a specific creature, the visible manifestation of their specific nature. So going, um, using another analogy, let us take the, a key on a piano. That key on a piano 
has the potential to produce a specific note. Um, let's just say the, the, the B sharp key on the piano. But the note is actually not in existence. Once you hit the note, the note will be in existence, but it's only going to be a specific note that the, that the piano was pre-tuned to produce when you hit the key. So it is not a pure potentiality if you just hit the key, if you hit the key and then just some random note comes out. That's not what St. Augustine means by some of the reasons. No, a specific determined potentiality. Only one creature will come from St. Augustine's for each of St. Augustine's seminal reasons. So what the seminal reasons are, God, the only creator, of all natures. St. Augustine states, it cannot, however, be said that he then added something to creation which he had not made before. So God made all the natures in the six days. Something as if it, as it were to be added later to the perfection of all the very good things he finished and completed on the six days. No, all the natures of the shrubs and trees had already been made in the first setting up of creation. And from this work of setting up, God rested. So St. Augustine's saying there is in the six days, God created every single nature that was ever going to be, period. And in the living natures, he created them in seminal, re in seminal reasons and potentiality. So even at this point, you can see that in no way St. Augustine could ever be a supporter of evolution if he maintained specifically that only that all the natures have com been completed in the six days. And in another place, in the St. Augustine's great work of City of God, he states, even before the nature of God is understood, it is wrong to think and say that there can be any other creator than God of any nature whatsoever, however, however tiny and mortal it may be. And this is very contradictory to evolution, since evolution and in fact, is a lower nature producing and creating a higher nature in and of itself. St. Augustine it was blasphemy. It would have been blasphemy to him because only God can create a nature. So after maintaining that, um, that it was a determined, the seminal reasons were a determined potentiality and God created every nature, all the, all the natures that were ever to exist, Next question is, is how on earth did these seminal reasons get from potential, uh, how did the seminal reasons and their potential um, um, produce uh, their creature that they're supposed to produce in actuality? Was it just some sort of combination of molecules or some environmental condition and then the seminal reason decided to pop up the animal it's supposed to produce? Thankfully, St. Augustine, um, um, answers this question for us. When talking about the creation of Eve from the side of Adam, St. Augustine states, what I will say with complete certainty nonetheless is that the flesh which filled up the place left by the rib and the woman's body and the soul and the shape and arrangements of her limbs with all the entrails and all the senses and everything else which marked her as both creature and human and female all of this was made by none but God, not acting through angels, but directly himself. So we have to remember here that St. Augustine um, um, saw Eve being made from the side of Adam as the, uh, the producing of actuality from the seminal reason. So in the six days, God made a male and female. Uh, he created Eve in their seminal reasons in poten potential. But now when he, uh, he, now when Eve is being brought forth from out of the side and into actuality, St. Augustine is specifically maintaining that it is something that only God can do. <coughs> but St. Augustine goes on to explain himself. So then God has in himself the hidden causes of certain deeds and events which he did not insert in the things he had made. And he does not activate them by the work of providence by which he sets up natures in order for them to be, 
but by that other one by which he administers as he may wish the natures he established as he wished, that is the after the six days. Accordingly, all the things too which were done miraculously, not by natural processes, had their cause, causes also hidden in God. If one of these was the woman being made like that from the side of man, and, and of him fast asleep, what's more, and her being made strong through him as though strengthened by his bone, what he, while he was weakened in her account because of the place of his rib was not filled up with another rib but with flesh, none of this was prescribed in the first establishment of things when it is said on the sixth day, male and female, he made them. In such a way that woman would quite simply would be made like that. All that was prescribed there was that she could be made like that and God would not make anything by a facilitating change of mind against causes which he had deliberately instituted. What precisely would be done, however, such that there would be nothing different taking place at all, all of that was hidden in God who created all things. So that was a long and lengthy quote. I will try to break that up a little bit. Um, so what St. Augustine is saying here is that one, um, Eve being made from the side of Adam was a direct miraculous event. And secondly, none of this was prescribed in the first establishment of things when it said in the sixth day, male and female, he made them. So what he's saying there is that none, Eve being made from the side of Adam was not put in potentiality. The seminal reason did not pop forth from the side of Adam. No, God took the potential of the seminal reason, which he had created in the sixth day, and then he brought that into actuality. So in this way, St. Augustine says that God did not have to create anything when he brought Eve forth from the side of Adam. He just used the potential already there and directly himself brought, the, brought Eve forth from the side of Adam. And a good example of this would be Balaam's donkey that we read of in the Bible. When the, Balaam, when the donkey started talking to Balaam after Balaam beat him, what St. Augustine would say um, is that the donkey did not have the, had the potential, you might say. Actually, sorry. He did not have the potential to speak. It is not within the nature of the donkey. But it is not against the nature of the donkey to speak. Do God had to directly intervene to bring forth this potential of the donkey, you might say, to speak. That, and going back to the string, oh, sorry, the piano key analogy, when one hits the key on the piano to produce a note, someone has to do the hitting of that key. And that someone in St. Augustine's interpretation of seminal reasons was God. But now the next question arises, however, is because not all the animals and man were brought forth from the, from the rib of another animal. So maybe St. Augustine is just saying that God intervened directly for Eve, but none of the others. The angelic doctor, St. Thomas Aquinas, commenting on this, states, As Augustine says, we do not know whether the angels were employed in God in the formation of the woman. But it is certain, as the body of man was not formed by the angels from the slime of the earth, so neither was the body of the woman, that is Eve, formed by them, from the man's rib. So what St. Saint Thomas Aquinas clearly saw was that St. Saint, Saint Augustine put the, crea the creation of Adam and the creation of Eve were direct miraculous events. But what about the animals and plants? St. Augustine states, nor can it be said he, that is God, himself made the, made the man, while as for the beast, he gave the order that the, he just gave the order that they were made. He made both the man and them, that is the animals, after all, through his word, through which all things were made. The same text you see which God says that God molded the man from the mud of the earth when he led them to Adam together with the flying things of heaven to see what he would call them. That you see is what is written. And God still, that is Adhuk, molded from the earth all the beasts of the field. So if he himself forth formed so this is the important point. So if he himself formed both man from the earth and the beasts of the field, what preeminence does a man enjoy in this respect other than 
he was created to the image of God. So, one, so St. Augustine is saying here that the creation of living things and man and Eve were all simul, um, sorry, were all divine, miraculous events. St. Augustine, and this is a very good summary quote of everything we've just talked about, and St. Augustine sums up everything, he basically sums up everything we've talked about so far and everything that he believes about the seminal reasons. St. Augustine says, We understand God to have finished these works when he created all things simultaneously, so completely that there was nothing for him still to create in the series of times which had not already been created by him in the series of causes. So here we see St. Augustine once again reaffirming, re reaffirming that God is the only creator of all natures. He continues, While we take him to have started in that he here fixed the causes, that is, he, he fixed the causes in the creation, he made them a determined potentiality, which he, that is God, would put into effect later on. So God himself would put these potentialities into effect. So the next important question, however, is after taking this all into account, we have to ask, did St. Augustine believe or, main, or somehow maintain that God could have created through secondary causes because we, we've just talked through it and there's no way that St. Augustine believed that the seminal reasons were a secondary cause. No, God created the potentiality himself and then he brought the actuality from the potentiality he created in the beginning himself. No room for secondary causes there. But the only problem is with the secondary causes is that no one can go back and ask St. Augustine what he what he would believe if the theory of evolution was put to him. But thanks to the Platonic heresy, we know what St. Augustine, um, through an error of his time, we know what St. Augustine, we know what St. Augustine believed about God creating through secondary causes. He states in the city of God, Plato taught that lesser gods made by the supreme God were the makers of the mortal parts of other animals. He knew that the immortal part came from God. Therefore, he maintained that the lesser gods were responsible not for our souls, but only for our bodies. So we see here uh, in the Platonic heresy, we have the supreme God creating lesser gods, which uh, the Platonic heresy, which was Christianized Plato's writings, would say the lesser gods were angels. So we have the Supreme God creating angels, and then the angels going out and creating the material universe, and then God supplying the souls for the living beings that they made. So we see here that God, the Supreme God, the first cause created the angels, and the angels created something else. So the angels were secondary causes. And it's, it's actually slightly similar to evolution where God created nature, and then nature itself created uh, all the living things, and then God supplied the soul. It's actually very similar to the theory of evolution, theistic evolution at least. But St. Augustine states, the true religion is right in recognizing and te te teaching that creator of all living things, that is of all souls and all bodies. So he's saying that only God can create souls and bodies. In all the animals on earth, the main one is man. He's made to the image, sorry, made, not mode, to the image of God, and from the reason previously given, or for some one better, one unknown to me, only one was made, although he did not remain alone. This should indeed be the final nail in the coffin of some um, proto-evolutionist St. Augustine, because if St. Augustine did not believe that God could create through secondary causes, there is absolutely no way that Saint, he can be a patristic support of evolution, because evolution is really just a theory of, of how God creates, not through, sec, uh, through secondary causes. It is the whole narrative of evolution of how God's creating through secondary causes. And St. Augustine, as we see, thanks to the Platonic heresy and his comments on it, was completely against this. So St. Augustine cannot be used as a support of, of evolution in any form. However, I'm not finished with this. 
well, the last point I want to make about the seminal reasons, which is a very important one, is the first, St. Augustine's firm belief that the first of each kind of creature had no parents. St. Augustine states about Adam, not, however, born of parents, but he, Adam, from the mud, and she, that is Eve, from, from his rib. So the only thing proper to Adam was that he was not born of parents, but made from the earth. He, that is Adam, did not have to, did not have to be born from parents, who were not there before him anyway, but to be formed from the mud in accordance with the causal formula which which he was made. Both, that is, trees and seeds, came from the earth, not the earth from them, so that their first parent was the earth, and the same too with animals. Seeds sprang up from grasses and trees, while these came not from seeds, but from the earth. Uh, I don't know what I can say. This is pretty clear that St. Augustine... Um, is, is adamantly against evolution. All right, conclusion. So now, let's set the seminal reasons, what St. Augustine believed about seminal reasons and evolution, side by side. Let's see what time I have. Two minutes. All right. So, seminal reasons. Specific determined potentiality. Evolution. Unlimited, undetermined potentiality. Potentiality. Some of the reasons. All natures were made and completed in the beginning, and from this God rested. Evolution. New natures have come, are coming, and will come into existence. Some of the reasons. All the different types of creatures that were that one sees today who came to be from the seminal reasons had no parents. Evolution. After millions of mutations, birth, deaths, and selection, a finished product is produced. Seminal reasons. The seminal reasons brought forth immediately, in full maturity, the first parents of the specific kinds that one sees today. Evolution. Over billions of years, a single-celled organism brought forth all the different kinds one sees today. Seminal reasons. Direct creation by God of all individual natures in their seminal reasons in a miraculous act by God, one bringing the potenti potentialities into actuality. Evolution. All natures seen today were the result of mutations of lower natures. Seminal reasons. A supernatural process, evolution, a natural process. Thank you for listening. <laughs>